The Knicks postgame show is presented by Tri-State Audi. Visit your Tri-State area Audi dealer today. A great game tonight for Julius Randle against the Hawks. He had 34 points, 13 in the first quarter, 19 in the third quarter. And Quentin Grimes with a season-high 23. He was great as well. Knicks with a dominant win. R.J. Barrett and company with their first back-to-back -back wins in three weeks as the Knicks blow out the Hawks tonight, 113 to 89. Great to have you with us from our Delta Amity Studios, Bill Pito, Alan Hanna, Wally Zerbiak. So Atlanta undermanned Allen to begin with. The Don the Jonte Murray hurts his ankle three minutes in, but that should not detract from what, again, was a great Knicks defensive performance. Yeah, I saw the missing three starters in this game. Well, they started, they missed three starters once you were about three minutes into this game, but you play who's in front of you, and you got to take care of business on your home court. See, I'm learning, Wally. I'm learning all the things that you've told me to keep in mind, especially in your home court. But they have needed to get to a point where they were playing confidently on their home court. And Julius Randle saw, saw no DeAndre Hunter in front of him. And he went right at it from the very start. Set a tone early and Quinton Grimes picked up from it. And now this is this nine-man rotation that has defensively gotten after it. Deuce McBride, Quinton Grimes as well. Getting after it defensively and holding the team under 90 points. So this is good things to see now. Keep building on this. Yeah, this is the identity I think the Knicks yep. envisioned having to start the season, being a team that's un, that's no fun to play against. You come into the Garden, you're going to have to grind out a win. I think the Knicks are slowing the tempo a little bit down. I noticed Tom Thibodeau after a few rebounds going like this, just slow down, slow down. We can get whatever we want against this team in the half court. And Julius Randle, they have no answer for him. And he just absolutely went off. The way he's been playing at the start of games is pretty impressive. He comes out in first quarters, and he gets the Knicks off to a really good start. Jalen Brunson struggled, two for 14. Uh, didn't shoot the ball well. Mm -hmm. And also, R.J. Barrett was four for 13. So two of your starters didn't shoot the ball well, but they did other things. They passed. They defended. Right. They helped hold the team under 90 points. And that's how you win games. You grind out wins like this by playing defense, and I like the way this game went. Two teams met here in New York November the 2nd. Knicks gave away a 23-point lead tonight, Wally. They're up by 18 in the second quarter. Atlanta goes on a 17-0 run to get within one, but probably the key segment of the game, end of the first half, Knicks stabilize and go up by 12 at the half. Well, they stabilized because the starters came back in the game. And without those three starters that you alluded to, Alan, now that DeJounte Murray went, went out without, um, without the other two guys, Collins and DeAndre Hunter, the starting unit could dominate this game, and that's what they did. It starts with their defense there, Quentin Grimes running the floor. He's the beneficiary of that easy two. And it also starts with Julius Randle just attracting a ton of attention and having to double-team him and having a monster performance. I mean, he was outstanding, not turning the ball over getting the ball to the right spots on the floor. He absolutely dominated this game. And this is a good feel-good win. That's two in a row for this Knicks team. I like the identity and the rotation, the way it's setting up. Um, you know, Tom Thibodeau is looking really smart with what he's doing. Again, the Knicks doing a great job in terms of holding the other team's field goal percentage way below normal. 37.6% Atlanta shooting overall. And six of 36, that is all for them from downtown. We're now joined by R.J. Barrett. R.J., congrats on the win, and thanks for joining us. Tell us about that second quarter. You guys were up 38-20. Hawks then went on a 17-0 run to get within one, but then you guys were able to stabilize and take a 12-point lead at the half. Um, I mean, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, a team is always going to fight back, especially a team like Atlanta with their, you know, with their shooting, and, and you know, they have Trey Young. You knew they were going to make a run, but uh, we were able to, you know, withstand that and uh, play our game and, we ended up getting a, an even bigger lead. RJ, I mean, you guys had had some struggles at the Garden. How important has it been now these last couple of games to feel it again, to feel a win walking off the floor at home? Yeah, it feels great. You know, we try to always want to uh, always want to give, you know, uh, a win to the fans, try to, you know, want them to come in here and, and have fun, you know, as much as we can every every single night, um, as well as, you know, the defense has really, really picked up the past couple of games. So it's, it's been fun to be a part of. Yeah, RJ, under 90 points the last two games. Defense has been outstanding. What has changed? What's the difference in these past two performances? I think just, you know, just locking in. You know, locking in um, on defense, you know, going, following the game plan. You know, and I mean, you know, guys like guys like Deuce and guys like Quentin are really, really playing some great defense for us. Um, as, you know, as well as the bigs in there cleaning things up. So it's just, it's a total team effort. RJ, thank you so much 
for joining us. Congrats again. We'll see you Friday night when you guys are at Charlotte. Thank you. Of note here, Cam Reddish and Derek Rose out of the rotation Sunday, out of the rotation tonight. Tom Thibodeau talked just about the entire pregame, all of his comments about this reduced, condensed rotation with Deuce McBride in there, Reddish and Rose out there. He, not in there. He thinks this is the best way to win, and, and there's some evidence that the defense is better this way. Well, that's exactly, I think, what the, the rotation, when you look at it, the focus is on defense. And you're bringing in a player like Deuce McBride who can fight through screens, who will get stay in front of his man who is somebody that recovers quickly on screens as well. He's not going to get stuck. And it was interesting what RJ just told us a couple of seconds ago when he said about, you know, following the game plan. I mean, that's, you know, that's as simple as that about how you play better defense is having nine guys who all follow the game plan. If you can trust where somebody's going to be, that part's important. But, you know, Wally, when you look at the numbers, it just, the last couple of games, it just shows you they are making it harder for their opponents to, to, to make shots. They get them out of rhythm. And I think the most important number continues to be defensive rebounding. 42 defensive rebounds in this game is a season high for the team. Yeah, and it seems like the Knicks aren't scrambling as much. They're more in position to yes. get those rebounds. Right. You know, they're contesting their threes. I think it's a lot because they're not allowing the ebbs and flows of the game to get out of, out of whack and get too crazy. They're able to set their defense. When they set their defense, they're tough to score on. They're staying packed in. They have Mitchell Robinson protecting the rim. Julius Randle is free to roam and get those defensive rebounds. He had 17 rebounds, yeah. 16 defensive rebounds. Yeah. That's, Monster game. That, that's a stat, yeah. you know, just phenomenon for you. You're going to be yeah. talking about that for the next three weeks. Well, that's, but that's, <laughs> that's all that's you talk 16. about is defensive rebounds. So there you go. It's critical. <laughs> 16. That's 16 times they stopped the Hawks. Yeah. 16 stops. With that's, a rebound. That's big. That's huge. That's, that's huge. how it works. Yeah, that's, that's that works. That's why yeah. it's important. That's why I keep bringing it it's up. It's not a useless stat, Wally. It's no, not. it's not. When it proves itself correct. And which Julius Randle is doing his job yeah. on the defensive boards. How about on the offensive end of the court, guys. I mean, when Randall, we, we talk about it a lot. When he starts off like he did tonight with 13 points in the first quarter, it really changes the entire complexion of the rest of the game. Yeah, he comes out against certain teams. He did it against, uh, uh, I remember the Timberwolves early on in the season. He just said, nobody can guard me out mm -hmm. here. And he just gets aggressive. He trusts his three-point shot. He was three for three from the three-point line in that first quarter. And he just goes into his Kobe game. You know, I call this his Kobe game when he starts pulling up off the dribble and just putting his opponents in the in the blender and in the torture chamber. I mean, these these threes were just on fire. That third quarter, the way he lit up the garden, yeah. 19 points in the third quarter, knocking down the threes, no hesitation. He had fans behind the Hawks Look bench. at the air under the shot, Yes, too. that's important. I now, mean, is that an adjustment? No, it's just Legs. when you get into rhythm, mm -hmm. you just let that thing go. Mm -hmm. You don't even think about it. Sometimes we see when he struggles, he guides it, you know, and he almost steers it and tries to get it to go in. You just got to flip Float that thing up there. Trust your shot. The rotation was perfect. Form looked great. The rhythm in his shot from his legs all the way up to his to his follow through just looked tremendous. And you know he's he's pretty tough to guard the way he's been playing the last couple weeks. He's been playing some good basketball. He has some fans behind the Hawks bench. One wearing a Randall jersey. They were all kind of encouraging him to shoot the three. He had a couple. He got a heat check at one point, but he was pointing to them. So again, it's good to also see Julius have some fun with the Garden crowd. Yes. You know that's also yes, a point. Get comfortable playing sure. here again feeling good about yourself, but, you know, it's, remember, I mean, the Hawks have been kind of his kryptonite. Yes. Remember back in the playoffs two years ago, yeah. they would play a zone. They were sending length at him, yeah. Capella and Hunter, and he just had a hard time finishing. But when you take Hunter out of the equation, Capella's still in the game. I mean, Capella's still there to try to, like, follow him around and make life miserable. But I think the Capella addition... Capella can't guard him on the perimeter. Well, no, not the on the perimeter. The two guys are Collins and Hunter. Yes. Did a good job of him on But they would the send him to Capella. Capella yes, would come and get him true. a lot. And yes. so you had a lot of that going they on They would have the rim protector, so they would get up yeah. to Julius, yes. But be, the Knicks are playing a little bit different now. And I, do you, without the same bodies, you can't play that same defense for the Hawks. So for Julius, it's recognize what's not out there and take advantage of it. He absolutely did that in this game.